comic, he partook in a super soldier program, much like Captain America did. But unlike Captain America, this program failed and was shut down. But even though the serum he was injected with didn't actually give him powers, it did activate his dormant metagene. And this activated metagene makes Deathstroke stronger, faster, with enhanced senses and a healing factor that allows him to survive most life-threatening injuries. Though it's not strong enough to regenerate his eye or one of his limbs if he loses it. He also has similar powers on the show Arrow, though he wasn't in the Super Soldier program there, but he did get his hands on Mirakuru, a Japanese Super Soldier serum. And it gave him the same powers as before, though his strength also seems to be greatly enhanced as he is far stronger than he normally is. And even his senses are greater than usual, as he's even able to smell explosives. And in the show Smallville, he also has a healing factor that supposedly stops him from dying. As he puts it, Let's just say the Reaper can swing his sickle at me, but I'm beyond death stroke now. And although this may just be rhetoric, these healing powers did allow him to survive a deadly explosion that otherwise would have been fatal. Teen Titans In the animated TV show Teen Titans, Deathstroke was never actually referred to as Deathstroke, but instead he was simply called Slade. Now this was because the showrunners felt that Deathstroke was too aggressive a name for a show that was primarily aimed at kids. And even so, the Slade portrayed in the show is just as sinister and deadly as the normal version. <sighs> that was nothing compared to what I'm going to do to you. In fact, he might actually be more sinister than the normal version of Deathstroke. And he is the big bad throughout the series until he is killed by Terra. You can't control me anymore! But after he dies, he is resurrected by Trigon and given super abilities. Apart from super reflexes and strength, he also has fire powers, fire manipulation, and the ability to phase through solid objects. Now, these powers come from a demon's magic. How did I? You might be able to stop time, birthday girl, but you can't stop me. Slade also kind of has the power to control the Earth in one episode. That apprentice that I mentioned he mistreated was named Terra, and she was a girl who can mentally control the Earth. But she struggled to control her power, and so Slade made her a special suit to help her control her powers. The suit was wired into her body and her nervous system, so it was impossible for her to take off as it had become a part of her. And Slade had a master control that he used to take over Terra's body and her powers. You no longer have any control in the matter. <gasps> so through Terra, he had the power to control the Earth. But this power is only by proxy, and she is eventually able to break free of his control and take him down. Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman Now, in this show, Deathstroke is extremely different than normal. In fact, I'd say that this is the most different version of Deathstroke that's ever been made. It's not like the comics at all, as he has both his eyes, and instead of a healing factor, he has magnetism powers, that he mainly uses to control the iron in people's bloodstream to cause heart attacks. Because, like the comics, he is actually an assassin. But unlike the comics, he is not a full-time mercenary. He is a doctor who gained these powers in a lab accident. And his real name is Bob, not Slade. And even his supervillain outfit is completely different from the comics. Which is extremely odd since his normal suit is so iconic. And to be honest, it comes across that the writers just wrote this script and then they plucked a random name from DC to make it look like it was inspired by the comics. Or at the very least, linked to a comic book character. Though in truth, I think they just came up with a completely different story and it's not related. But in any case, he is called Deathstroke, so he should be on this list. And the full extent of his powers isn't shown, as the suit he wears actually restricts his powers, so the metal isn't constantly flying at his body. Because he has magnetism powers, but he can't control them. And whenever he's not wearing the suit, metal just flies at him and sticks to him and can't be pulled off. So he's nothing like Magneto or other metal controlling people. He can't move metal around the room. He really can only work in small, close proximity. Speed Force Powers In this Rebirth comic book arc, Slade steals Kid Flash's Speed Force powers and gives himself super speed. Now, some of you may wonder why the Kid Flash in this version is black, when most of us know the white Wally West as Kid Flash. But in the Rebirth series, Kid Flash is still named Wally West, but he's black and he's technically a different Wally than the white one. In fact, the actual white Wally West is also in this universe. It's a little confusing, I know, but just think of them as two separate characters with the same powers. 
And for those of you who are wondering why they bothered to change his skin colour, when it doesn't really matter anyway, it's most likely because the CW show The Flash has a black Wally West who is Kid Flash. And the comics are just trying to make it more like the show, which makes sense as more people watch the show than read the comics. It's just an attempt to gain more of the market. But anyway, Slade steals his powers, and he does this using his icon suit. Now the suit basically absorbs Kid Flash's powers and lets Deathstroke access the Speed Force. And he does this so that he can use them to time travel and go back in time and save the life of his son, Grant. Of course, this doesn't work out so well, mainly because his son absolutely hates his guts. And no matter how many times Deathstroke tries, ultimately he can't save his son, because his son won't even listen to him and just wants to kill him. And meanwhile, back in the future, the Titans and the Teen Titans have teamed up, and they travel back in time to try and stop Slade. They meet their former selves, and Damien decides that the quickest way to fix the problem is to kill the past Wally West. Now, of course, he doesn't kill him permanently, but he does use a karate move to stop his heart, and his heart does start again soon after, but the event fades Wally West out of the time stream, and then coming back into the time stream disconnects the speed force powers from Deathstroke and returns them to the Black Wally West. Now, I know that all of that is a little bit confusing, so think of it like this. They want to return Black Kid Flash's powers. So basically, they hit the reset button on time, and the powers are then restored to their rightful place, which is with Kid Flash. Now you may wonder why killing the white Wally West would affect the black Wally West. All I can say is this, it's the typical timey-wimey nonsense. This universe has been chopped up and moved around so much that, although they are linked, they are also completely different. Like I said, just think of it as a reset button. You can try to understand it further, but to be honest, there's not really much to understand. It literally just is them resetting the universe. Now, sadly, although Kid Flash gets his powers back, it has also caused Deathstroke's suit to now be directly connected to the Speed Force. And so Deathstroke, still having Speed Force powers, runs back through time to save Grant once more. But when he goes faster than the speed of light, he gets trapped in the Speed Force. Now, most of the Titans and the Teen Titans think this is a win-win. After all, Deathstroke is a murderer, he has killed thousands, if not more, people, and him being gone means that more people are going to stay alive because he won't be able to kill them. Unfortunately, the Black Wally West doesn't feel this way, and so he decides to run into the Speed Force and save him. Now, the thing about this that doesn't make sense is, Deathstroke is trapped in the Speed Force, that's true, but he's not dead, he's perfectly healthy and alive, so basically, they put him in prison. The heroes put a murderer in prison, and Kid Flash then decides to break him out, which makes no sense whatsoever. But anyway, that's what happens. So Kid Flash goes in to get Deathstroke, but unfortunately he didn't think it through because he doesn't know how to get back out. So Wally West essentially had to go in after him and pull him back. Now this means that Wally West, the white and the black version, and Deathstroke all come back out of the Speed Force. And though they still have their powers, going through the Speed Force and coming back out like this has disconnected Deathstroke from the Speed Force, meaning he no longer has super speed. And Kid Flash then got in a lot of trouble for running in to save him, when he could have potentially destroyed the entire universe. So, dumb move on his part. Injustice. In the Injustice video game, there are super pills that give a person super strength and semi-invulnerability. Now, it's never explicitly stated that Deathstroke has taken this super pill, but it is extremely likely. After all, he is fighting gods and monsters in the game, so even with his normal powers, he still would need a boost to stand a chance against them. So almost certainly, he's had the same boost in strength and toughness as pretty much every other character, who didn't already have superpowers, has had in this game and comic. Doomstroke now, Doomstroke was a character that appeared in the pages of the comic book Superman Batman, issue 60 and 61, and he was a combination of both Deathstroke and Doomsday. His full powers weren't exactly made clear, but most likely has both the healing factor of Deathstroke and the strength, invulnerability, and super sensitive Doomsday. He's also super intelligent, and actually created a sentient robot who has infiltrated the heroes. Now, this character isn't actually a real person though, it just happens in a shared dream that Batman and Superman are having, thanks to the supervillain Dr. Destiny, who can control people's dreams and trap them in them, but I thought it was worth mentioning. And finally, we have the God Killer Sword. Now, this sword was given to Deathstroke by the god Hephaestus, as he hires Deathstroke to kill the titan Iapetus. 
Now, the sword is obviously able to kill a god, hence the name, but it also has a few other powers, such as giving off controlled blasts of energy, changing shape into different weapons as needed, and it also has a sort of telepathic link with the user and helps guide their actions and guide them towards their intended target. The sword is also able to reflect and double any force it is hit with, and it reflects it back at its attacker, which is why Deathstroke is able to take on both Superman and Wonder Woman and though he does eventually lose to them, he does give them a run for their money. Now this sword doesn't technically speaking give him superpowers, but like wearing a Green Lantern's ring, it does give him a few new abilities, so I thought it was worth mentioning. And that is every time that Deathstroke has gained superpowers. Now I must say that I think the best story is by far the one told in the Teen Titans show. It was a great story that was well told and well paced, the writers had clearly been planning it for years, having Deathstroke die, having him then come back, and having them turn against Trigon, and having to go on a quest with Robin to get his flesh and blood back. And I think that Slade turning against Trigon, and then teaming up with the Titans, was just a fantastic story, and it's definitely one of my favourite stories ever told in DC Animation. As the dynamic between Slade and Robin was always entertaining, but watching the two together like this was probably the best we ever saw of them on this show. But what was your favourite time that Deathstroke's gotten superpowers? And are there any other times that you think should have been mentioned in this list? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mass Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.